So you've helped me out massively over the past few weeks and I'm sure I've given you plenty of extra work. I kept you busy, haven't I? Yes, you have. You picked a very tricky inverter, yes. Software on there is expecting to see a signal from the inverter to say turn on, but it's not getting that signal. Let's get comfortable and let's get started and find out how we got this battery working. Yes, this took more than me. And I don't need to say it, but read the t-shirt. Ah. Hello, people. It is days later. Honestly, if I had filmed every time I'd stepped out of that door to try something slightly different, that would make an incredibly long video and probably a very boring video too. So let me sum up what I've done since I've last seen you and we'll try and see what's going on. So, oh, in the last video, did I think it was going to be easy? I thought we'd connect a few things up. Bob's your auntie and we have a working battery and inverter. Oh, how I learned. There's a few things that I need to get in place correctly in order for testing. Everything I've done up to this point is fairly by the book, but now we're getting into some off the book some ways that this inverter isn't supposed to be used according to the manufacturer. It tells me here uh, BMS2 can low, BMS2 can high, BMS2 can high can... Yeah, so that's reassuring, isn't it? So pins four and five. I'm going pretty long with this cable because that gives me the option to chop it down later. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put my, should we call it a BMS box? This is an outdoor rated cable. Okay, so we last left this battery with all of our important need to be done right things right. So we had our AC that was right. Our battery connections were right. They were correctly fused. But we kind of glossed over the whole battery emulator side of things. We didn't really go into that. How do we make a EV battery and an inverter talk together. Well, I could explain this, or we could have the guy that's created the software himself explain it. He'll do a far better job than I have. So I put that question to him. Yeah, so the battery emulator, uh, it's a piece of software uh, that runs on a board. I actually have one of these boards right here. Uh, so it takes in the EV battery data and it converts it to a format that the solar panel inverter can understand. And it, it just acts as a gateway between, between the two. But of course, there's a lot more things that run on the software. We host like a web server so that you can inspect the data. And we also support things like this uh, home automation, home integration via MQTT. Uh, all these sort of things is also included on the board. So yeah. it's, it's an advanced piece of software for sure. It has been in the works for several years now and we have had a lot of different collaborators uh, join in on it to make the software better so yeah yeah <clears throat> basically it gives people freedom to take control of their own like energy needs uh, in a very like cheap way they can set up home batteries you no longer have to rely on like ex very expensive products you can just set up your own uh, and kind of yeah make yourself self-sustainable and I think everyone, like, that's why we made it open source also, because I want everyone to just have access to this, because I think energy should be uh, free for everyone. Yeah, definitely. And I, for me, I see in the future we could have a lot of EV batteries on the road. So being able to show the world what's possible through the videos that I've done and through what the work you're doing helps I think to show that there's actually way more options than just destroying a product when it's still got life in it. Um, of course, everything needs to be done safely, and that is what we're we're implementing, aren't we, with with battery emulator? Yeah. Yes, for sure. So as you can see, there is a link between these. Eventually, these will be din mounted. So, one big test in battery.
While I put together all the connections that we're going to need to make the battery emulator do its job, CAN communication between the battery and the battery emulator, and then onto the inverter, all the power connections and the earthing, let's just consider. It was after watching Daniel's videos on YouTube and going through his GitHub that I decided that this project was for me and for the channel. But Daniel didn't have the privilege of following somebody else's work, so how did he end up on this journey? Let's find out. So the battery emulator, it, it all started, I think it was maybe two and a half years ago. Like um, I, I bought my um, solar panel inverter, I put up solar panels and I was like, yeah, this one supports batteries. So for sure, I want to get batteries. But then I found out that you have to buy brand batteries and brand batteries are very expensive. And it's sort of a locked down ecosystem. So I then was a bit uh, disappointed and was like, ah, it doesn't really make economical sense to get one of these batteries. Mm. Uh, but then luck had it that I actually came over a defective uh, one of these brand batteries, a BYD battery. And um, I took it apart and I uh, fixed it up. And I also uh, did some reverse engineering on the communication that the battery was sending towards the inverter. And this kind of opened up a uh, kind of attack vector for us to, to try and use our own batteries instead. And uh, this all just started with trying to get Fronius inverters working with Nissan Leaf batteries. That was it. I, I didn't <laughs> think actually this was going to go anywhere else. It was like, okay, we, we got uh, our Fronius inverters working with Leaf batteries. Like, we are done. But, oh man, I was wrong. This um, whole project has kind of spiraled, uh, not out of control, but it has grown like exponentially. Like we have support for, I think, over 30 different inverter types now and probably also over 30 different like EV battery type packs also. So, yeah, it's growing very fast. Yeah, just to think like where you started a short time ago. What amazes me about these projects is you start to bring together a whole bunch of skill sets, don't you? You bring together people that have, you know, the ability to work out what the pinout is for a plug, you got other people that specialize in different things and you bring it all together and you make something far greater than you could perhaps on your own. Yes, for sure. Yes. The software that you get on the Lily Go kind of feels a little bit like black arts to me. And I'm sure that a lot of my viewers um, and potentially even your viewers as well feel the same. So that's kind of your skill set, isn't it? Where you've been able to kind of build that GitHub repo and have the ability for people to then build off what you've been able to do, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, yes, for sure. Like the CAN bus stuff, especially like uh, before I started this battery emulator project, uh, I was working on getting uh, Nissan Leaf battery upgrades working. So I spent years like just looking at CAN data and like reverse engineering bits. And uh, from all this, uh, it like the knowledge gain there was very helpful uh, to make this project happen and of course like this can uh, know how it translates directly to other battery types as well so you w once you figure out how to crack something the next one goes a bit easier and, and yeah you kind of roll from there yeah on that thought process my wife and i have almost a couple of times brought a, a tired nissan leaf with the aim of of restoring it and to be honest we both think that the nissan leaf is a little bit ugly and there are some better alternatives yeah but when you can pick up maybe a second car for a couple of couple of grand uh it does seem quite tempting and that's down to you <laughs> to the work you've done and the the you know the ability to retrofit bigger packs and things like that definitely one of the most moddable evs around yeah which is, you know, impressive. I, I do wonder what manufacturers think. Have they watched some of your videos to see what we've been able to, to reverse engineer? And are they kind of scratching their heads? How do we stop this? Or let's just watch this and see what happens. Yeah. Well, honestly, I think they're pretty, like, happy that someone is, uh, like, making their things last way longer than intended. Yeah. So, or at least I hope they are. <laughs> Now we are just testing, so if we do manage to get this to come alive, 
we might just tell it to put in a few kilowatts because we've not actually tested this battery properly either, have we? For all we know, this could be a duff battery that shows good cell balancing. The reality is, it probably isn't. But we never know. Now that everything is connected to our Lilligo boards, we can compile the software onto them. Onto our two Lilligo boards. That's right, two Lilligo boards. I mentioned previously two Lilligo boards, a double Lilligo board. Okay. Now, one of these boards takes the CANBUS data from the battery and then transmits that into something that the inverter can understand. It sends that data across to the other Lilligo board and that other Lilligo board then feeds that to the inverter and then sends the, its communication from the inverter back to the other one. Now, why not just have one? Two sounds stupid and overly complicated and I would agree. But the inverter that I've chosen has to have no automotive CAN messages sent to the inverter, otherwise it will lock out. So it has to intercept and convert and not have the two different types of messages on the same CAN bus, is it? So I'm currently redoing the files on the laptop because they don't seem to be communicating so I've got my cable USB cable I did upload to this one first which is connected to the battery and it went green I got a green light so that's good news it could just be that I've switched them round I'm not really sure so I'm going to be probing across the outputs here with this mega and we'll see what we get and there we're seeing it. So we yeah, we're getting an output from the battery. Getting all the glare off that. So we've got a little screen. Doesn't tell me that much, just tells me power. Really I need to connect to the app at some point. And then I should be able to see more. I think it's a cloud based thing. Now, after spending hours trying different things, one of those we spotted that you need to actually turn the inverter on by pressing the green tick for a certain amount of time. That didn't work. We still weren't getting state of charge and the inverter still wasn't happy. We even tried turning off in software the contactors allowed so that they would automatically close and maybe the inverter wanted to see that. But we weren't getting anywhere, and this is where I needed to call in the expertise of somebody much smarter than me. So, let's ask him what he did. So, you've helped me out massively over the past few weeks, and I'm sure I've given you plenty of extra work. i kept you busy, haven't I? Yes, you have. You picked a very tricky inverter, yes. Could you explain what it is that you've done to help me? We, we didn't expect it to be exactly like it was at the start, did we? We... I personally thought this was going to be an easy one and it was supported, but what did we find? Yeah, we found out that the inverter that you picked, which was the Fox SH3, the three-phase version, is very different compared to the single-phase version. It doesn't even accept the same battery types anymore. So, yeah, we had a lot of work to add integration for this inverter type. Yeah, which effectively it meant we had to rewrite all the back-end code and create a new inverter, didn't we? Yeah, it was, uh, thankfully, someone had already done uh, most of the uh, legwork here. Uh, I, I think it was actually you that found it when you were like searching the, the web. You found someone, was it uh, Fossey something uh, yeah. on, on GitHub? Someone who had done already uh, storing the, the CAN data from, from this type of inverter with a brand battery. And they have had already started with a lot of the reverse engineering also. So that's the nice thing about having things open source is that you can you can copy, you can you can use uh, things that someone else has already figured out and integrate it in your solution. So yeah, we we spent a couple of uh, weeks, I think, getting this uh, integration like perfect. And yeah, it, it was a lot of work. 
as you can see here, nine revisions of changes. Some of them smaller, yes, but some of them dramatic. And as you can see, this inverter was never going to be happy with the original Solax protocol. It just works differently. But now we know, and we have a new integration added to the GitHub, which other people can benefit from. There we go. We had some other teething problems over the way. I think at one point I blamed you for the software not being quite right when it actually turned out it was my meter that was a problem. Yes. But there we are. I, yep. And I was so thinking when I saw the symptoms that you explained that I was like, yeah, this sounds like a CT like problem for sure. And you were like, no, 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 I, I checked it. I checked it. <laughs> yeah, quite simply, I when I put together the wires, I had color coded them for each phase and it was the color coding that was wrong. So when I put them in, but I should have checked, I should have double checked and I got the, the meter out, checked across the phases and L2 and L3. Not dangerous, it just results in that meter not functioning as it's designed because it's, it's seeing a, a different phase. But there we are. So now the project is together and we've done some testing for a little while and everything is working. So it's just making it neat is my next stage. And I'm incredibly grateful to you for all your help. And me also to you for <laughs> testing all of this and like verifying it. So now that the next person who gets the same inverter type as you don't have to go through all of these uh, steps, they will have a much, much simpler time of, of getting yeah. the parts working. And that kind of, that thought brings me back to how this is your baby. You're building up a collection of, of inverters and batteries that can work together. And ultimately this has got you know your name on it it's your project and it really is impressive what you've been able to do um, and what you've been able to put together and how you've been able to bring people together to do this another communication issue that i faced with this battery once we'd given up on the two litter goes because they were known to have some issues especially when you're trying to diagnose a bigger issue we switched to an mcp 2515 yes that's right a board I haven't heard of too up until that point. And I had two of these boards which I purchased off Amazon. Could I get them working? No. I ended up buying another one off an eBay seller while I was waiting for some different boards and I tested that and it worked. We were able to consistently communicate with our inverter. So with all of these changes, with different hardware, we did eventually get this battery to do exactly what we need it to do. And it has spent the last couple of weeks sitting there doing its thing. We've got to make this thing neat and tidy, haven't we? Now we know it works, we want this to be a nice decorative piece. And of course, everything has got to be put in IP rated enclosures and be fused correctly. Not just our main battery connector. I hope you've had fun with this video and you now understand a little bit more about what it takes to get an EV battery to work with an inverter. A massive thanks to Dala. He has helped me massively through his Discord. If you're not familiar with Dala, and let's be honest, I don't know why any of my subscribers wouldn't be, then check out his GitHub, which I put in the link below, and also consider joining his Discord, where there is a wealth of knowledge of people that are doing projects like this, and of course, his brain as well. I'm so grateful, Dala. Thank you for your time and thank you all for watching this video. Don't forget, you might want to consider liking and subscribing. Come on, it doesn't cost you anything and you get to enjoy the fun and the process along the way of this battery project. Ooh, who knows what we could have planned next.